Uh, I want to welcome former SEC chairman and CBC contributor Jay Clayton. Good morning to you. Morning. morning. You, you, you understand this filing at all, by the way? I think, my, I think Mike has it exactly right. Um, to the extent you're going to raise primary capital or to the extent that people are going to be, people are security holders, are going to be selling shares in the future, right. you want to get your ducks in a row. Um, I have about a million questions uh, about what's taking place over the weekend and how the markets have reacted. But I actually just want to start with the very basic idea that we're watching the markets this morning obviously rebound quite remarkably, given uh, the fact that we just had Dan Sr. on, uh, effectively quite worried about this escalating. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, as somebody who's just watched markets over the years and seen what happened last week, and then we were watching Bitcoin over the weekend as sort of a risk-on, risk-off kind of thing, how you think about it? Wow. Well, that's kind of a off the top of my, my head um, question. Yeah. But uh, what have we seen over the last two years about markets? Uh, and mar what have markets seen? Markets have seen that we really don't want a sharp dislocation with China. Right. We actually are continuing to allow oil to flow out of Russia um, for stabilizing purposes. We don't, we don't like $5 gas. We don't want $120 oil. I think markets... Um, are seeing the reaction um, around the world to this of, look, things are, things are okay as they are. China has no interest in their economy going down. Russia has no interest in their economy going down. We, you know, right. we are ha continue to have many bilateral discussions with China. So what kind of, we were talking about China earlier with, with David Sanger, uh, with Admiral Kirby. What is your sense of where we have leverage or don't with China as it relates to what's happening in, in Iran and, 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 and Israel, meaning as, as, what kind of pressure points do you think that China can put on Iran or do you think that they won't? I, I, th I think we had a really good discussion last week about this when Rahm Emanuel was on, right. that China uses economic coercion to get its way around the globe and that we have to recognize that. We also have economic coercion with China that a sharp decoupling from the right. U.S. would definitely cause a deter continued deterioration in their economy. Uh, I think everybody, why, why did Janet Yellen go? Like, everybody likes the status quo now compared right. to, to a decoupling. Do we have to get somewhere in the future where we're not as susceptible well, to coercion? It doesn't appear that we are moving that's, that's, why we're, that's why we're building the plant in Texas. Well, I was right. going to say, we're building the plants in Texas. Meanwhile, the Chinese are saying we're not going to be using Intel chips, for example, in our networks in the future. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about where this all heads? Well, I think, I think you know, we always look at it from our side. Right. If, if we're going to decouple from them, you know, they're going to decouple from us over time. They don't, they don't want us to have the same well, but won't level that of leave, That'll leave us ultimately with less leverage, not more. No. Well, but with, well, we may have less leverage, but they'll have less leverage over us. Which is, if you ask, if you ask people, you know, what did we learn from the pandemic? There was a tremendous amount of economic leverage going both ways. We definitely learned that. Companies, you know, right. I have called for large multinational companies, not, not in some kind of mandatory, you know, check the box way, but to discuss with their investors just how, how dependent on China they are so that we have an understanding of that. It, it goes both ways. I think leaders at each country, you can right. tell, are nervous about that, but that level of interdependence. I mean, it's a very interesting question about dependence, because dependence creates a relationship. We have no dependence right now on Russia, right? Happily. But, but we also have no relationship with Russia it, at but, all. But, but relationships can be, <laughs> all, all relationships, all human relationships, they can be mutually beneficial or corrosive, right? People can use relationships to their advantage in a very corrosive way. Just, and, and, and so right now, you, but your view is you would just get out of Dodge, if, if you will. No, I think, but I think showing that, let's put it this way, showing that you can leads to a more healthy dependence, right? When you're dependent and have no options, you're, you're, at, you're at somebody's beck and call. When you're dependent and have options, you know, you have a much more cooperative relationship. It's that way, any right. business, you don't want to have a single supplier, right? That supplier then has a great deal of control over your business. You can have an incredible relationship with a single supplier if you have alternatives.